Welcome to Seaside Sermons, a ministry of ChristAssembly.org. My name is Bert Allen. I always like to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with folks and remind them that Jesus came from heaven, laid aside the splendors of heaven and his full glory as the God of this universe, and he came to earth and died on that cross for, on purpose so that he would pay the death penalty that you deserve and that I deserve because we are sinners who fall short of the glory of God. And then he was raised on the third day. But because he died and paid the death penalty we all deserve, he invites us to receive the free gift of eternal life today from him by grace through faith that we believe that he died for us. And therefore, I'm forgiven. If you want to know more about that, stick around to the end of the video. I'll be standing in front of a bricks background, and I will share from the scriptures the best news you'll ever hear about being born again today by faith in him. But for now, let's dive into the study. We've been studying the book of 1 Thessalonians. It's a great manual on discipleship and friendship, and really how those two things fit together. And in chapter 4, he's emphasizing that we should live with our vessels, our human bodies, in sanctification and not in morality and impurity. You know, it's also interesting that in the news nowadays, you read about all kind of prominent public figures living in immorality and proud of it, saying, well, I sin and that's why I go to church. Or you find out that somebody who's supposed to be telling others, and they claim they're telling others, oh, don't sleep with the people at work. And then you find out that the very person who's saying that is sleeping with somebody at work who's married to somebody else. And you're going, this is all just immorality. We see it all over the place. People married, sleeping with somebody they're not married to. Single people having sex with people they are not married to because they're both unmarried, perhaps. Or one's married, or both married. All of that amounts to immorality. It's a very broad term in the New Testament. And he said, so abstain from immorality. Know how to hold your body in honor and respect before God. Don't just hook up with people. Don't have sex with people that you're not married to. No sexual activity outside of marriage. And a lot of people today would say, yeah, well, those are old values or they're just way out. Nobody believes that. And that's true, that most people today just accept immorality across the board. But God doesn't, just because most people do, doesn't make it right. That we need to learn how to put aside our lustful passions by the power of God. Okay, so that brings us to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 6. And it says that no man transgress and defraud his brother in the matter, because the Lord is the avenger in all these things, just as we also told you before and solemnly warned you. Well, what matter is he talking about? Well, if you look back in the previous verse, it's that idea of lustful passions that the Gentiles live in. So God's saying, don't let anybody defraud you in this matter. And when he says, don't defraud you, he says, don't defraud your brother. When you transgress, sexually against another person. When you're doing immoral things, you're doing it with someone else. And God says the effect of that is to defraud your brother. And you're taking something that you do not have a right to take from them. Think about that. When you defraud somebody, you're doing something with intention to take something away from them that you don't really deserve. You are causing a big problem. If you're ripping off your brothers and sisters in Christ with your immorality, if you're doing something to the parents of that girl or that boy, if you're getting caught up in stuff that is completely wrong in God's eyes, no matter what society tells you, you should realize that you're transgressing. You're stepping past the mark and saying, I'm going to do what I want and I don't care what God says. You know, I have a lot of friends that struggle with this all the time. And the younger you are, it seems more like you set up patterns that will be characteristic of the rest of your life. And if you start fooling around a lot, 
having sex outside of marriage when you're in junior high, high school, or even beyond either way, you're setting up a pattern that's going to be an issue for the rest of your life, whether you're a believer or not. And you need to be careful of that because if you're going to be a great friend to other people, you will not do immorality with anyone. I'll say that again. The Bible's telling us that if you do immorality with anyone, you're going to have a hard time being friends with anyone because you've already showed God that you're going to do what you want. You're going to fulfill your lustful passions just like the Gentiles do. But God put an exclamation point on it. He says, when you transgress and when you defraud your brother, guess who the avenger is? It isn't going to be mom and dad. It isn't going to be brother or sister. It isn't going to be anybody on earth in that sense. No human being. The avenger is God himself. And you're going, wait, Bert, what are you trying to tell me? But in what I'm telling you, it's what's in verse that God's looking at us and saying, when you go out and do immorality with someone else, and you're defrauding your brother by transgressing against God, that God's going to be the one who's going to be an avenger of that act. One way or another, God is going to take care of that. He's going to be an avenger of those people you're defrauding and transgressing against God. And you go, well, are you sure? Well, think about the rest of the verse. So it says, because the Lord is the avenger in all these things, and here's the kicker, the really important part that just drives it home with that exclamation part. Just as we told you before and solemnly warned you. In other words, Paul's saying, this isn't the first time I told you all this. I'm breathing out the stuff that God's breathed out. I'm just writing it down. That God said this. He has solemnly warned you before. Don't live in those lustful passions. Don't believe what the people around you are telling you. You live for God. And if you don't, God will be the avenger. Your immorality will bear bad consequences in your life for a long time to come. Wait, Bert, I thought if I was a believer, I was forgiven entirely. Yeah, absolutely true. You confess, you will be forgiven. But it's like the alcoholic who drinks too much. You can confess the drinking, and it doesn't repair your liver. Your liver will still be shot over time from too much drinking. From too much immorality, you will have not only physical consequences, you will have far greater spiritual consequences from God. He really built, will be the, war, the avenger. God really has warned us solemnly over and over again, don't get caught up in that immorality. It opens up a world of spiritual connections that are bad for you, sinfully bad, demonically bad. It opens up the whole lust of the flesh. You don't want to get into that, and you're destroying and corrupting other people with your life. How does a believer say, I love you, let's have sex, when you know that that's transgressing God's commandment and that's really going to bring the vengeance of God upon you for doing that? Wow, even if you're a believer, God wasn't kidding. He was really telling us the truth. So as we think about friendship today, if you're going to be a great friend. Don't get into immorality with anybody. Keep marriage as the place you have sex and the only place you have sex. That's what God said. Do we face these huge temptations in our flesh? Absolutely. Does everybody face that? Absolutely. You're going to have this lustful passion inside of you that you're going to have to deal with by the power of God and walking in the Holy Spirit every day. But that's what we need to do. Make sure that we take to heart what God's telling us about God being the avenger. The Lord will be the avenger. We've been solemnly warned. Stay away from it. You don't have to live like that. You don't listen to society telling you, it's okay, do whatever you want. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for loving us, that you're the one who takes care of us all the time. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, and we know that you love us. In your name we pray. Amen. Before I close the video, I'd like to share with you four verses about eternal life. I often ask people this simple question. Why should Jesus let you into heaven? And the answer to that question surprises many people because it comes from the Bible and it's simple and it's clear. Most folks, when they hear that question, they tell me, well, I've been good or tried to do more good than bad or I tried hard or I've done a lot of nice things and I hope God will let me into heaven. 
they somehow think if their good works outweigh their bad works, that God will let them in. But God says, actually, I'll let people into heaven because of a free gift. But the story from Jesus starts with four verses, and I'm going to read them one at a time. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 You see, for every person who lives today on earth in human flesh, we've all sinned, every one of us. We've all told a lie. We've all done or said something that made somebody else angry, and we were doing it out of anger ourselves. We've all done things to hurt other people at one time or another. God says that's all sin, and I look upon that as falling short of my glory, God says. God says we should never fall short of his standard, which is the glory of God. Well, is it serious that we've sinned? Should I be worried about that? Everybody sinned. Why should I worry? Well, consider Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death that all of us deserve the death penalty. At the moment we sin, we incurred the death penalty for the smallest sin or the biggest sin. I'm happy that Romans 3.26.23 continues and says, But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, if you've been listening carefully and thinking about what the Bible says, so far we've learned that we're all sinners, we all fall short of the glory of God, and we all deserve the death penalty. This doesn't sound like good news until you read the last part of that last verse. It says that God has a free gift for all of us. It's in Christ Jesus our Lord and it's eternal life. The free gift of eternal life that only Jesus Christ can give you. He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. Why would God offer us this great gift if we're all sinners? Well, Romans 5, 8 tells us, it says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. He died in our place. God loves sinners like you and like me. He died in my place and in your place. He paid the death penalty for me. I often illustrate the free gift like this that I have this old Nissan truck. It has 285,000 miles on it. It's not that great a truck. It sits at the beach every day. But I illustrate the point this way. I hold up the keys to my truck and I say, I'm going to make you a symbolic gift of my truck. But until you take the keys out of my hand, it's not your truck yet. Well, let me tell you what I mean. A lot of people have been going to church for years. They know all about Jesus. They can quote verses about Jesus. But they know in their heart that they're not quite right with God. And there's never been a day in their life where they've been born again and they know it. You see, they're just staring at the keys in God's hand and he's offering you the free gift today of saying, reach out by faith and receive that free gift and take it into your heart today. Receive the free gift. Okay, how do we do that? Well, Romans 10.9 tells us how to do that. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And he means saved from the death penalty, eternal destruction. So we can receive that free gift right now by faith, and we can pray a prayer together. I urge you to pray with me. I'm going to pray it right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I confess that I am a sinner and I fall short of the glory of God. I confess too that I deserve the wages of sin, which is death. But Lord, you offer me the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I accept that free gift right now. I believe that you love me and that God died on the cross for me, that Jesus Christ is God, and he died on the cross for me. You paid the death penalty for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. 
I repent of my sins and I accept that free gift, Lord. Thank you so much that you have forgiven me. In your name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I'd love you to send me an email and we'll rejoice together. Send me the email at friend at christassembly.org. That's friend at christassembly.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Hallelujah. Scripture quotations taken from the NASB, New American Standard Bible, copyright 1995 by the Lockman Foundation. Used by permission, all rights reserved.